Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to make a start at the very least on my review of Sudden Wealth by Robert Llewellyn. So Robert Llewellyn is mostly known for playing Crichton on the TV show Red Dwarf, which is one of my favourite TV shows. Um, as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. Genre-wise, it's kind of a noir thriller almost. It's got like dark humour. Maybe not noir, but dark humour. Dane reads. Um, so we've got Sudden Wealth. Meet Miles, a rather normal English cycling enthusiast who happens to be stacked. Anna, a prize-winning German car designer who keeps falling asleep on the job. Paula, a publicist with more money than she can spend and an inability to stop talking. And meet Mario Lupo, highly successful, extremely radical trauma therapist. On the day before Britain signs up to the Euro, Mario gets them to steal £15 million. It will contribute to their personal growth. And in six hours, it won't be real money, so it won't be real theft. Or so they think. Unfortunately, Miles, Anna and Paula are not the only ones with robbery in mind. So, let's go. A lot of references to technology in this that make it feel dated, because this came out in about 2000. Although the stuff about like Euro and Euroscepticism and all that is still quite relevant because of what happened with Brexit, you know? So, for example, we get a reference to a, a shuttle dial satellite phone with earpiece. Because he doesn't want to fry his brain because obviously it's well known that mobile phones give you brain cancer and so we get it. Miles was one of the few, a man who understood computer code, a man who had a simple idea that turned into a killer app. Net jargon for an extremely popular computer application everyone would want. Well thank you for explaining that, that is old jargon indeed. I mean you got to bear in mind this book was written before the dot com burst as well. We get a reference to Concord flying overhead, obviously Concord is no longer a thing. And Miles' father's shop is like an antique shop. And it says, uh, his father's shop suffered from this constant high-speed possession. Unlike Eton or Windsor, which had a huge tourist trade passing every establishment on foot, very few people walked past Morris Antiques and Datchet. Those who did would notice that the items inside were virtually invisible behind a screen of anti-Euro posters. We will never accept Euros here, they screamed in fluorescent pink and black. Save the pound, reject the Eurocrats. In between the posters hung a selection of Union Jacks in various stages of decay. Uh, we get a reference to this pie. Half a chicken and leek pie came out of the oven. It was a sorry affair, the deep frozen variety containing the minimum amount of meat legally possible for a product describing it itself as pie. So you have to have meat in apple pies. I don't really understand what that, that argument is there. And uh, Miles hates cars. He uh, cycles everywhere. So in this chapter, here we go. Cars and their drivers, the fatal combination of the 20th century. A quarter of a million people killed every year as a result of car impacts. Worse than AIDS, worse than hundreds of diseases which received endless coverage in the pro-car press. Worse even than smoking. And yet no car carried a government health warning. How many gardens buried under tarmac or gravel to give room to park? How many towns and villages scarred beyond repair by roads? And then Miles takes the Eurostar, which I took when I went to Paris. So that was nice to read about that. And, uh, my, uh, and Mario is talking about his trauma therapy and he goes, An English writer, J.G. Ballard, once said that if a person survives a traumatic experience, a car crash or war or natural catastrophe, then they will be changed forever by that experience, and often for the better, having faced their own mortality. That's very interesting, don't you think? He was in a war, wasn't he? Indeed, I believe he was. As a young boy, he was captured by the Japanese in the Second World War. And uh, yeah, that's what led to the, him writing Empire of the Sun, which I read a few months back. And again, this kind of dates it. Philippe was sitting at the table in front of what Miles recognised to be an iMac DV, a computer ready fitted out to be capable of editing videotape. A camera was plugged into the side of the computer. Videotape? I didn't know this. Um, do you know what they do, professional cyclists? They put lumps of steak down their shorts between their legs because all the friction caused by those great big thighs turning the pedals makes them wear out their ball sacks, apparently. The only way they can stop that happening is by using the steak. I wonder if that's true. So there's a little kid in this, uh, he's actually Mario's kid and uh, he's got a Nintendo 64 and he's very happy about it, which I thought was cute. I never owned one, I went Super Nintendo and then upgraded to a PlayStation because my family was poor. And we get a reference to the boys in blue as a nickname for the police, which I thought was cool because that's the name of my upcoming Lightfold release. Okay, I've just got one more tab for you here and that was a, a typo, so let me see if I can spot it. Uh, for a man like Cooper, spilt stud was not a new experience. It was meant to be spilled blood. Uh, I'm not too sure about Spilt, I think it should have been spilled rather than spilt. But anyway, Sudden Wealth by Robert Llewellyn. Um, I saw a reviewer of this had said it had a weird ending, and having now read the ending, I agree that was quite a weird ending. It's kind of tough to follow. I'm not really 
anyway, uh, the ending ending I got, but there was a bit towards the ending where I was like, what just happened? Um, you can definitely tell this was written by an actor presenter rather than a novelist. Um, not necessarily a bad thing. I think if you like Robert Llewellyn's stuff in general, you're going to like this. It was quite humorous, quite smutty and risque at times as well. Um, but overall, it was just okay. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. I wouldn't really recommend this to anyone, again, unless you are a Robert Llewellyn fan or you like the sound of the storyline. So there we have it, that's what I made of Sudden Wealth by Robert Llewellyn. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.